AQA, A level physics, induced fission. This bit of the specification is what we're going to be doing in this video. So now there's different designs of nuclear reactor. They use different coolants, they use different moderators. So I'm just going to talk about one very simple design, uh, which is kind of, I've seen this on a few A-level papers. So um, if we learn this, we should be okay. So the different bits of the nuclear reactor, yeah? Uh, first of all, the coolant. And the coolant takes heat away from the reactor. The uh, fission reaction produces heat and the coolant takes it away and it takes it to a, a heat exchanger where it boils up water to make steam and then the steam goes through turbines, electricity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's different things you can use as a coolant. Um, pressurized water. This isn't the water that turns into steam. That's in a different circuit. So there's pressurized water, uh, carbon dioxide, there's uh, advanced gas cooled reactors use carbon dioxide, liquid sodium, different things that you can use <clears throat> as a coolant. Uh, basically, you want something with a, a large specific heat capacity, don't you? So it, it takes lots of energy away from the reactor. Uh, the fuel rods uh, contain uranium-235. That is our fissile material. Um, that's dug out of the ground as uranium ore. There are certain places in the world where you can dig uranium ore out of the ground. You get the uranium out of it. Uh, and then there's lots of different isotopes of uranium. So you use a, a centrifuge to separate the uranium-235. Uh, so that's called enrichment. And then you put that into fuel rods uh, and then the fuel rods go in an assembly which goes into the reactor. It takes an awful lot of uranium ore to produce these uranium fuel pellets. You know, sometimes you see very misleading comparisons of uranium with like fossil fuels. I mean, I'm not saying fossil fuels are good, but you don't get millions of times more energy. You know, if you compare uranium ore with coal, then I think the ratio is about 10 to 1 in terms of energy. But, but nevertheless, this is where we get uranium from. And our fuel rods, the good stuff in there, is uranium-235. Um, now, something called a moderator does a very important job. Uh, and the moderator slows down neutrons. In our fission reaction, you will notice that to get the fission reaction going, you need to absorb a neutron. To absorb the neutron, it's much, much more likely for that to happen if the neutron is traveling slower. However, uh, the actual fission event is an explosion. All of these particles, and these three neutrons which are emitted in this particular reaction are traveling very, very fast. And so they are unlikely to be absorbed. So you need to slow them down and you slow them down using a moderator. And what happens is that the, the neutrons collide with the nuclei of the moderator. And if they are not absorbed, then they lose kinetic energy in these collisions. The collisions are elastic and they lose kinetic energy. So this these circles represent the moderator and your neutrons will go bouncy, 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 and they'll bounce into the, the nuclei of the moderator and they will lose kinetic energy. Slow thermal neutrons, we call them thermal because it's almost as though they're kind of room temperature, but they're not, it's actually a lot hotter than that. Slow thermal neutrons are much more likely to be absorbed. Neutrons collide with the nuclei of moderator atoms and lose kinetic energy without being absorbed. Uh, this increases the chance that an emitted neutron will be absorbed. Um, graphite is a very good moderator and heavy water, deuterium oxide, heavy water. Deuterium, as in uh, 
most hydrogen is 1-1 one, one, isn't it it's just a proton the nucleus uh, deuterium is 2-1 uh, yeah it's a proton and a neutron yeah okay, and deuterium oxide d2o or h2o with your deuterium is heavy water uh, graphite is preferred because it's cheap and it's light it's readily available yeah graphite it's the stuff inside your pencil graphite what makes a good moderator what material should be used as a moderator now some materials absorb neutrons they gobble up neutrons for example boron boron gobbles up neutrons other materials don't uh, and you want a material that doesn't absorb neutrons and you want one that has a nucleus which is about the same size as a neutron then why because then in the collision the neutron will lose the most kinetic energy if you look at these diagrams here if this neutron collided with another neutron and if it wasn't absorbed then the neutron would be an elastic collision and the neutron would lose loads of kinetic energy if a neutron collided with a very very large nucleus and if it wasn't absorbed then it would kind of just bounce off and it wouldn't lose a great deal of kinetic energy so you want a nucleus which is about the same size as a neutron okay and so you want a small nucleus so heavy water is very good i mean h2o the hydrogen ordinary hydrogen would absorb the neutron but h2o it, the neutron would bounce off but uh heavy water is costly to produce uh graphite is almost as good uh but it's readily available and it's cheap so that's the moderator the moderator slows down the neutrons and that increases the chance of fission occurring control rods now we said that uh, boron gobbles up neutrons so if you want to slow down the reaction then you move the control rods into the reactor if you want to speed up the reaction then you pull them out of the reactor if there's an emergency and you need to stop the reaction quickly then electromagnets let go of the control rods and they fall into the reactor quickly hopefully okay because they absorb neutrons so they slow down the chain reaction or they stop the chain reaction boron is the most common one there is a material called hafnium which can be used apparently hafnium okay uh, based on cost based on availability uh, boron isn't that expensive actually now um, something you need to know it mentions in the syllabus critical mass now what does critical mass mean well neutrons are produced in these reactions now will a neutron if a neutron is produced there will that cause another event or before it causes another event will it escape yes and looking at these diagrams if you have a neutron produced in the middle of this small mass and one that's produced in the middle of this big mass so this these neutrons are going to bounce around and eventually they may escape well it should be obvious that the chances of it escaping and not doing anything are greater for the smaller mass because it's smaller because the neutron has less distance to go before it can escape so whether a neutron causes another fission event will depend on the mass of the material and the bigger the mass of the material the more chance there is that you'll get a chain reaction happening and the critical mass it's the minimum mass of fissile material needed for a sustained chain reaction a sustained nuclear reaction okay uh, an atom bomb like the hiroshima bomb was actually two hemispheres of uranium 235 and each one wasn't critical mass 
but then there's an explosion which rams them together and then you end up with a sphere which is critical mass chain reaction boom okay and that's how the hiroshima bomb worked just end with a few uh it doesn't actually mention it in this part of the syllabus but it's got to be mentioned arguments for nuclear power it is reliable uh, it produces large amounts of electricity uh, it doesn't matter if it's sunny or windy or anything it always produces large amounts of electricity no greenhouse gases if you're comparing it with fossil fuels um, and it's become quite popular in places like France they get most of their electricity from nuclear power arguments against nuclear power it is not renewable okay uh, our supplies of uranium are not going to last forever uh, the biggest problem is dealing with nuclear waste nuclear waste is very 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 toxic it's very ionizing and uh, our government at the moment there hasn't been any government really in this country which has taken this problem seriously Basically, some of this nuclear waste, some of the rubbish in it has a, a half-life. So you're talking 100,000 years. You're talking having to put this stuff away somewhere safe for 10 times longer than the pyramids have been on Earth. Okay? It's a massive, massive problem, which um, all governments so far have not taken seriously. It's a massive problem and decommissioning is very expensive if you've got an old nuclear power station that you want to get rid of how much is it going to cost to take it to pieces bearing in mind that most of what you're going to have is high level nuclear waste around the reactor it, it costs a ridiculous amount of money you you google because you might think i'm lying google how much it's going to cost to decommission sellafield Yes, Sellafield was one of the first nuclear power stations in this country. Cost of decommissioning Sellafield. Okay, look that up. Do accidents happen? Well, yes, they do. Okay, there's Chernobyl, there's Fukushima, there's Three Mile Island. Accidents do happen uh, and they will happen in the future. Uh, and at the end of the day, wind and solar are cheaper. Yeah, they used to be more expensive. When saying that, when you worked out the cost, that a lot of people conveniently ignored the, the cost of dealing with nuclear waste because they weren't actually doing it. Yes, and decommissioning costs, but we're storing up problems for future generations. And I don't just mean our children, our children's 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 children will have to deal with the very, very toxic, nasty waste that we are producing at the moment, very, very irresponsibly. If you're kind of getting the feeling that I'm against nuclear power, um, well, you'd be right, really.